What's up everybody, Motor Merc here coming to you from sunny Southern California with a little bit of a DIY project. As you can see I have got soft saddlebags on my bike. These are pretty much the only option that you have for a lot of sport bikes. There are hard bags that they make for the Ninja 650 but I had a mighty hell of a time finding any. Uh, actually I didn't find any, I found some stores that used to have some but they were out of stock so I was SOL. And even if they were in stock, they're hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Like, you get up near a thousand bucks for bags. So, these soft bags, which I got from Cycle Gear, they're the Cycle Gear brand Sedici soft bags, were a hundred bucks total for the pair. And they're pretty nice. I mean, they get the job done. They hook onto the bike right here so they don't slide forward. They kind of, there's a band here across the front that sits over the passenger seat so they don't slide backward, and an additional band for support here. And then I just throw a bungee here, you can see, I throw a bungee across the bottom here through a piece of the, the bike frame where it's not going to interfere with any of the mechanical stuff. So I've been using this setup for probably a year and a half. It's been pretty solid, but over time the bags have sort of started to droop. You can see they kind of like droop in towards the middle a little bit. And it's to the point where you won't be able to see it right now, but when the suspension bumps the tire up, rubs on the inside of the saddlebag here and it's starting to wear it off just a little bit. So I decided to do a little project. Got some uh, metal rods here, got some uh, bolts, nuts, and spacers, and I'm going to build myself a little custom frame just to kind of hold the bags out so they don't droop down as much. And I'm going to take you along for the ride. So uh, I've never done anything like this before. Uh, it's going to be an adventure for all of us. So I'm going to start by just pulling the bags off of the bike. Just kind of grab this bungee cord off. I uh, keep my bungees in the bag for easy access. Oh, I got to be careful. If you've seen some of my earlier videos about USB chargers, I've now got dual. I've got electronics all over the place on this bike. I got a little switch here installed. Haven't hooked up anything to it yet, but you can see uh, it turns on that little LED up there. Just, I guess it was a proof of concept to see if I could do anything like that. I try to do little DIY projects here and there, but I've never done anything like this with real hardware before, so we'll see how that goes. As you can see, this is uh, the place where I want to mount this all up to. The bike comes with these holes tapped into the frame already, so it's meant to have hard luggage installed, but uh, there's just not a lot of hard luggage available. So The guy at the hardware store assures me that these reinforced cutting discs will be sufficient to cut through these rods, oh god, to cut through these heavy steel rods with a, a home use Dremel tool. So I'll be trying that out. Oh, oh geez, don't fall. Okay. <sighs> okay, let's see what we got here. I've got these long bolts with long spacers. And uh, these are going to slide in right here to this deeper hole here. I've got these shorter bolts with shorter spacers that are going to go on the rear. And what I'm going to do uh, for stability is put one rod coming down off each of these bolts. They're going to meet at the middle so you'll have a little triangle that'll be nice and stable so the rods won't rotate on the bolts that, the, that I'm attaching it to the bike with. That should hold them nice and steady. It was a phenomenal pain in the ass finding this hardware by the way. I went to Home Depot, I went to auto parts stores, I even searched online absolutely nowhere had this stuff in stock. There was one place I found online, I think it's called Bolt Depot, that had some stuff like this, but it didn't have all the sizes I needed. So uh, I found a place in the valley here, northwestern LA County, called Tampa Hardware, and they had everything I needed under one roof. So shout out to Tampa Hardware, thank you guys, for keeping things in stock, for crying out loud. So first things first, what I'm going to do is drill holes in the tops of these so I can sort of line them up where I'm going to want them. Uh, I'm hoping that the drill bits and the Dremel discs that I have here will be good enough to cut through this. The guy at the hardware store said I should be fine, so I'll just mark where I'm going to drill here. I guess I'll drill through this side. Give myself a little target here. Here's my little electric drill. Here's uh, some drill bits. 5 16ths, I think, is the size I'm going to want. Looks about right. 
Actually, you know what? Before I go and make a stupid mistake, why don't I Google it? I'm going to use that 5 16 bit to do a little bit of drilling here. Oh, man. Hopefully this is going to work out. Is that the drill mode? I think that's the drill mode. So just for maximum safety to make sure the rod doesn't move around while I'm trying to drill it, I'm clamping it down with a couple of C-clamps here. Hopefully this will keep it from wandering, slipping as I go. Got my drill ready. Okay, let's see how this goes. I'll just go to town. Oh, that didn't really quite work, did it? Why is it wandering like that? There we go. Drill, baby, drill. Nice thing about a helmet is it provides you, by default, with a little eye protection. This is going to take forever. It is working, that's the main thing. It's coming along nicely. should probably put this here to catch as many of the metal filings as I can. Probably not good to have metal filings all everywhere. Slow but steady. That is a thick piece of metal, man. At least I know what I'm building will be durable. I'm just glad to see the drill bits working. I was afraid that it wouldn't. I thought maybe a, a home use drill bit might not be tough enough to get through steel, but just apparently takes forever. Gotta be almost there. Gotta be almost there. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see if one of these bolts will fit through that hole. Booyah! Alright, so now that that first hole's drilled on there, pull this off. Oh, I made that tight. So... What you're going to do is stick this bolt through here, grab this spacer through there, kind of start threading this in, and now it's time for some hand tools. So, no, wrong drawer. So I'm going to, uh-oh, something's missing. Is it in here? Maybe. Somebody must have borrowed it and never brought it back. No quarter inch drive ratchet today, so we'll just use the three quarters. Oh, yeah, buddy. There you go. So that's how they're going to attach. I'm frankly shocked this worked at all, but uh, I'm used to failing at everything, so this is a good feeling to see this working out a little bit. I guess there's plenty that could still go wrong. So the next step is to drill this bad boy down. So then I can triangular triangulate. I'll have these on here like this, uh, bolted in, and then I'll see where they meet up, where they cross, and then I'll have to drill them both there as well. A lot of drilling this is going to take hours. So here you can see the mark I made for cutting. Mark on the other piece. The reason there's two marks here is because I was a little conservative on the first one. Or I should say I was a little aggressive on the first one. I'm being more conservative because I can always cut more off, but I can't put any back. Grab my trusty, dusty old Dremel and see if these drill bits, or uh, cutting discs, rather, the guy sold me, are worth the money. Now I just got to anchor this thing back up here again for safe cutting practices. Hopefully. Got my mark showing there. And for this I'm definitely going to want the visor down because shit's going to be flying everywhere. Oh, I'm going to need to plug this in, aren't I? <laughs> Alright. So... Here goes nothing. Yeah. 
way. Put that shit out, man. Time to go ahead and take it easy. Hey, put that shit out, man. Sounds <laughs> like an F1 car or something. Oof, things are getting hot. Too hot to hold. Serious business, this dremeling. Wow, this is still fucking solid as... Well, solid as steel, I guess. I'm pretty disappointed in myself. I just realized that I forgot to rotate the lens on the camera before I started making this video. Uh, when you move the camera from the top to the side, the mounting plate is uh, rotated 90 degrees, so I forgot to rotate the lens. Uh, so some of the footage will have to be trimmed, rotated and trimmed to fit in the frame, but that's okay. I'm not going to throw out the footage. About to put the bike up on the stand here so we can do a little demonstration. Sorry for the sniffles too in advance because I've got... Uh, come down with a little bit of a cold so overnight my videos are gonna go from normal to sniffly but that's okay so what we have here is uh, last night I finished drilling the holes and I finished cutting two of the rods so I've got them drilled in here got the triangulation point anchored there and as you can see this is like this is really sturdy this is not going anywhere uh, somebody already asked actually I made a Twitter post that I was working on a DIY project and I posted up a picture of this and somebody, I think Whelan, Whelan asked about this, uh, what steel I was using. It's 3 16 inch by 1 inch. Uh, he asked if it was mild steel and to be perfectly honest, I don't know enough about metal work or metallurgy to know what type of steel it is. Uh, but the, the, yeah, that's the measurement, 3 16 by 1 inch. And as you can see, this is how it looks on the bike pretty good very solid and I got to admit I didn't plan this out in advance but uh, where this triangulation comes down to uh, doesn't interfere with the foot peg but it's a very close shave and I like where it comes down to because the fact that this sharp point here where this jaggy metal comes down uh, this spot is kind of uh, really closely positioned to parts of the bike that are already there, which means in the event of a crash, there's not really a, a high chance of my leg getting jammed up on this sharp edge here, so that's good. Uh, the other side, as you can see, has not been installed yet, but what I want to do while one side is installed and the other is not is just a little demonstration so you can see the difference between having the new frame on and not having the frame on. So as you can see on this side, the bag is really saggy. It flops down. And it's probably a little hard to see, but uh, here, the inner edge of the bag actually comes in close enough. On this side, it started to happen. Maybe you can see uh, the inside of the bag has touched the tire a couple of times there, and it's just starting to wear it off there, which isn't good, which was my impetus for building this little rack. But yeah, anyway, as you can see, this side sags down quite a bit. It goes under the seat and it goes into a position where it can interfere with the tire or the tire can hit it. On this side now with the rack, as you can see, it's nicely held out straight. So this bag is pretty much held upright and this bag is still sagging. So when I put the frame up on this side, they should both be held out nice and straight. So as you can see, I've got my last two rods cut and drilled. I actually took the last two pieces to a shop nearby where they have a proper grinding wheel because cutting through this 3 16 inch steel with a, dr a handheld Dremel was just not worth the effort. It took me probably an hour to do two cuts for that the two rods that are on that side. I think it took me over an hour of just like standing over it, grinding away. So I decided to go to a shop and have them do it with a proper grinding wheel. It took them about 30 seconds to do both, including rounding off the edges nicely so that it's not too jagged. Uh, I did the drilling myself, so I drilled all eight holes, and I'm ready to throw it on the bike. So I'm going to mirror what I've done on this side. I've got the longer one on the rear coming forward, shorter one on the front coming down. So grab the longer one, 
grab the uh, appropriate bolt. I'm so glad, like I, my plan was to use a nut to tighten up the inside of this, which might have worked as well, but this is probably a better idea to use a spacer and just snug everything down to the frame. That is a pro tip I got from the shop I go to, and I'm glad he gave me that suggestion because I think it's probably a bit sturdier, a bit safer. So there's the first one. Here comes the second one. Yeah, I can get a few threads on there. Then I can use my tool to tighten it up. My tool. So I just hand thread these in to get them started. Then I start tightening them up a little bit until they're just a little bit snug. But I can still move them so I can position them. Then I look at what I have here. Kind of just position it up to wherever. That's not a precise science here. This is only going to be supporting soft saddlebags. So jam this in there. Throw a lock nut. I got the nylon lock nuts for this so it'll be nice and secure. Make sure everything's lined up properly. Good. Then I just start tightening away. The triangulation side will start there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the bottom of this triangulation point tight so that I have the shape of the triangle correct. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to snug up the top bolts, which I have just got on there finger tight just to hold them in place to get an idea of where the thing will be lined up. So that's good and snug. Now I can tighten these top two, get them pretty good and, good and tight. Okay. I don't really want this coming off on the freeway like my exhaust did. Okay. And that, like the other side, is so tight that for you to wiggle it, you're going to knock the bike over first. And there you have it. That's pretty much done. Got the frame installed on both sides. This is how it looks. Very simple, but gets the job done. I'm thinking I may want to put some kind of I don't know, like a rubber thing or something over the top of this just so that the hard edge of the metal doesn't dig into the bag and start ripping it up. But for now, just to give you an idea how it's going to look and how it's going to work, I set the bags on top here like so. The bike just happens to come with this little hook here. Hopefully you can see in the video. It's perfectly lined up to grab these little D-rings that come with the soft luggage. So I hook that on. So now the bags are prevented from sliding forward. The support straps across the top hold it up on the bike. And the front strap sits on the front of the passenger seat so it's not the bags won't slide back. So it's secured from sliding forward by the D-rings, secured from sliding back by the upper support strap. So the final little bit of securing that I do is I run a bungee cord through the front D-ring on this soft bag. And I run it down through here. This goes through a part of the motorcycle frame where it doesn't interfere with any moving parts. It looks sketchy, I know, because it's really close to the chain, but the way this is bungeed up, as you can see with the upward pressure on it, there's no way it's ever going to interfere with the chain. And that's going to just sort of give this bag some support so they don't flop out to the side. And it also adds a little bit of help holding them forward, pulling them down. Just sort of adds a little bit of security and stability to the whole system. And as you can see now, both saddlebags are held out perfectly straight upright. It's just a little more clean looking, a little less floppy, a little more secure. It's a little confidence booster because I, I didn't know how it would work out. Working with metal a little bit, drilling, cutting. Uh, and yeah, it ended up working out pretty damn good, actually. So uh, a couple of things to note here as part of the wrap up. Uh, I do strongly recommend you use safety equipment when you're working with metal because these little metal shards here are nasty like if you ever get one of these stuck in your skin or one of them goes in your eye especially if it goes in your eye then you're probably on your way to the hospital so i do recommend safety goggles or if you don't have safety goggles use a motorcycle visor or something because i did get hit in the face with some metal shards and if i hadn't had these on some of them may have gone in my eye another thing is uh, if you're drilling metal, uh, I keep reading everywhere that it's a good idea to use oil, some kind of lubricant on the drill bit so that you, 
I don't know actually what it's supposed to do, but uh, I just used motor oil on the drill bit just to, has a little bit of lubricant drilling through. That seemed to, it did make a difference. It did seem to help a little bit with uh, the speed and ease of the drill getting down through the metal. The first few holes I drilled, I didn't use the oil and it was a very slow, arduous process. So anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you have learned something from this video. Uh, if not, uh, feel free to ask any questions that you have and I'll be happy to let you know anything I learned along the way or that I could help you out with if you want to do a project like this. I pretty much just used home tools for this. Little electric drill. Uh, I actually dremeled through the metal with this little handheld home use dremel. So it can be done. It can be done. It's a lot of work if you don't have the proper tools like metalworking tools, but it can be done. So yeah, man, this is beautiful. I'm super stoked. Cool. Anyway, sorry. Just kind of enjoying my fruits of my labor here. Thanks for watching. Much appreciated. Motor Merc. Checking out. Catch you guys later.